way no I've just well what first of all I just need to check that we are actually live and then that we're streaming so it says it's setting it up can't see you at the moment so it should redirect into Facebook page here we go okay Jem are you still there I'm still here Emma can you see me can you hear me um yeah I can see you and I can hear you I've just got to get you up on my screen so I can actually see who I'm talking to here we go it looks like we're live on Facebook yeah um, <laughs> I was just saying to Jem it's always a bit glitchy at the beginning but I think the group members are used to that um now so I'm just going to double check on my phone and make sure that we are definitely streaming into the right place because I have Mess this up. Yes, we are. Okay. And we do have somebody with us. So um, if you're joining us on tonight's live, do let us know um, that you're here. There will be an opportunity to ask questions at the end. But uh, before we go any further, I want to give a warm welcome to Jem Ayres, who is <laughs> back with us for the second time um, and fresh from a weekend retreat that you've been running uh, yes. down in Glastonbury. Have you been in Glastonbury? Is that? Yeah, my full body orgasm retreat. So I'm a bit tired, but let's see what comes <laughs> out today. Facilitating a lot of orgasm in other people. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 16 so, orgasmic beings this weekend amazing, <laughs> amazing and I've actually been on one of your retreats and I know that they're really beautiful and special and expanding and yeah in fact words fail me right now to describe it but me and my mm. partner had a really beautiful experience when we were there the last time so for those of you who don't know and check tell me if I'm wrong you're an orgasmic embodiment coach is that yes yeah. Right, that is a brilliant title. And uh, Jem already has done one video in this group before, which was called The Art of Self-Pleasure. So if you haven't watched that already, do check it out. It's um, in the video archive. But tonight we're going to be talking about the art of embodied dating. And <laughs> which is something that we're That'd like- be exciting. Yeah, we're super excited about this. Um, so it's gonna be the theme of the talk and it's also going to be a workshop that we're gonna be co-facilitating together. <laughs> if I can feel all that I've got orgasmic energy. Um, <laughs> we're going to be co facilitating it in mid November uh, in London, actually at my house, because uh, I have a huge space where we can um, turn it into another center for embodiment and inspiration and orgasm and juice and all those good things. So we're going to be talking about the workshop in a little bit more detail at the end of tonight's conversation. Uh, but what we thought we'd do this evening as well is kind of interview one another um, about embodied dating like what is embodied dating why did we come up with the idea what are we hoping that you guys will get out of uh, the workshop if you come along um, or if you're not planning on coming along you know how can you bring more embodiment to your dating lives and I know Gem I'm going completely out of order here with what we agreed but I just wondered if you could just quickly maybe answer this question before we get started yeah like, absolutely <laughs> what is embodiment like how would you as an orgasmic embodiment coach how would you describe embodiment oh that's a really good question and a good question to start with yeah. so embod embodiment is all about living from your body which sounds mm -hmm. a bit obvious right but so yeah. often we're living from our mind and our mind and the crazy mind chatter and our intellect makes a lot of decisions for us and we mm -hmm. don't always hear the subtle sensations that the body is giving us to let us know the right thing to do in any given moment so gut instinct for example mm -hmm. we all know about gut instinct if we're following our gut instinct, most of us know our gut instinct is rarely wrong. It's mm. just we can't actually always hear it because the mind can get involved so much. Mm -hmm. So this is what embodiment is. Mm. Living and listening to the body, to the different skills about how to tune in, quieten the mind and act and live from an embodied place. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. That's a really, really simple and crystal clear description. I really like that. And I just wanted to add, so sometimes we can't hear it, but I feel like sometimes also we can hear it, but we don't quite believe it. Yeah. We, we, we doubt ourselves. We doubt ourselves. Yeah. So if you were to describe embodied dating in your own words, how would you describe Embodied. Oh, just, yeah, as we just said, being able to trust your instincts, trust your body, really feel into yourself. Yeah. And instead of all the attention being on, will he like me? Mm. It's very much, actually, 
what's my body telling me about this message, about this person in front of me, about this phone conversation, about their dating profile? Mm -hmm. So it really is, again, just tuning back into the body. And it is the crazy mind will send us mad. They might look really good on paper, but actually if we hear the body, I Mm -hmm. recommend that's the, that's the winner. Our body knows. (laughs) because I think something that happens for women online as well is it's not only the kind of crazy intellect and all the stuff that happens there but it's the crazy intellect meets crazy internet right and then (laughs) like crazy intellect and crazy internet together just kind of ends up doing some kind of neurotic spin out and we're told actually we're kind of told that we're crazy actually crazy ladies if we do trust our instinct too much Mm -hmm. and especially in on the internet when anyone can present as anyone I really really think it's such a key gift to kind of hone in on that we as women do have and can have a very embodied sense a very real you know visceral sense of what we want and what we need and is this person going to fulfill those needs in us and I think I feel like for a lot of people, what happens is the Internet feels really alienating and really kind of like disconnecting. Yeah. And actually, so people like if we've already got like a kind of, let's say, an interrupted um, relationship between our mind and our gut instincts, we doubt ourselves like 10 times more because of this yeah. technological interface. But well, we're going to get on to talking about this. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'm going to talk a little bit about my journey from getting it wrong. <laughs> to getting it right which basically did come through a development of um of my intuition and and wisdom even in the face of something that felt kind of alienating and and overwhelming so it can be done it, it can totally be done yeah and, and we can have embodied tools as well to deal with the overwhelm like right. the constant stream of information that comes at us through right. so many different profiles and how we process that as well yeah. but to stop ourselves from getting confused burnt out or yeah yeah how do we stay buoyant in our body around the prospect yeah oh beautiful (laughs) I'm almost tempted to dip to ditch our structure completely (laughs) follow (laughs) follow the flow of this well when you go back to our structure go on (laughs) well when you first spoke about inviting me in with you on this experience weekend I was really excited just because I know in my own experience that yeah the negatives and the positives of dating and the negatives and the positives of actually how I can live in my body as well Mm. and I know that this I think really think this would fit with what you offer your women yeah so I suppose if we get back to the structure my first (laughs) question is um why did you get into helping women with this work um why or how did you sorry why why did you probably guess but I want to know yeah so I'm just checking to see who we've got we've got a couple of people um well (laughs) I got into it out of out of personal experience because for a long time uh my dating life and my love life was a complete disaster it was a total car crash I think I'd been internet dating on and off like I was yeah I was on the internet like very early on in the late 90s when it first came out you know and it was quite a taboo uh, subject no one was really doing it apart from a few kind of people that seemed a bit weird Um, and so you know right up until when I met my partner I must have been on and off the internet for a good 15 to 18 uh years like yeah like not all the time you know there were kind of like there was a another boyfriend for a while in fact there were a couple of boyfriends for a while there was a period where I got involved with um orgasmic meditation and like conscious sexuality stuff when I wasn't on the internet so much but I you know there were there were plenty of years where (laughs) I was giving it a go and putting in um, some hours (laughs) I put in some serious hours I got seriously addicted at certain points I saw the internet change a lot over those years um but there was definitely a certain point I think and I think I read the average person meets their partner after 10 or 11 dates on the internet and by that stage I was about 50 or 60 Mm. (laughs) and I was like hold on a minute um there must be something that I'm doing wrong here or it must be you know it's not just that because I hear a lot of women say I just can't find the right person right they're they're like a lot of women will say it's about about the people on the other end or people will say you know I really hate 
um, internet dating and, and complain about it. But I think there was a specific turning point for me where I realized that actually it wasn't really either about, about either of those two things, that it was actually about the signal that I was creating, about um, where I was putting my energy, where I wasn't putting my energy, what I was willing to settle for, what I wasn't willing to settle for, how I displayed my sexuality, how I didn't display it. Like, And I kind of came to the conclusion that it's a bit like, um, I could describe it in one of two ways, either a prism or a sausage machine, and I'm not sure which is the best metaphor. <laughs> but basically, whatever you feed in is, is what you get out magnified at the other end and you know after some coaching and some support and a lot of experimentation and other kind of aspects of life like I said with like the orgasmic meditation community and other things I started to figure out like a better way to go about it and I tell this story quite a lot but eventually before I met Nick because Nick and I met on Bumble um I literally, I was like, a, I, I had like a kind of like laser sharp focus and I literally went about it with a scalpel uh, because I was crystal clear by that stage what I was looking for and yeah. also crystal clear about the indicators, like what, how, how, you know, if I was looking for a certain kind of man, I was also got really clear about what the indicators of that person would look like, what they would feel like, what they wouldn't feel like. I got clear on my own boundaries, like how I wanted to play things in terms of how long I was willing to chat for, you know, when was a good time to move towards a date, what my policy was on sex, you know, or on responding to sexual messages from men. So, and when I got clear on all of that and I was really able to own my own desire and I don't know how you would call it really, but like the principles that I was, you know, the, my own kind of playing field, I guess, when I was willing to define my own playing field and I, and I had done that with some success, then the right man automatically came in. Mm. And I guess that, you know, like I do a lot of one-to-one -one coaching with women, which is quite expensive, you know, like you have to be, willing to make a fairly big investment um, in one-to-one -one coaching and it's about getting women all the way through to relationship but I, a, a, a kind of old colleague and friend of mine and training partner pointed out to me a few years ago that actually when people call themselves a relationship coach not everyone's in relationship and that for a lot of people they just want some help getting started with dating and because that complaint comes up so often, like I can't find the right man or I just meet unavailable men or I can't cope with the Internet or I just don't want to Internet date. You know, it felt like a really good thing to create something that was affordable, accessible and specifically focused around the problems that women have on the Internet. Yeah, great. Yeah, so that's... Internet dating is <laughs> such a big deal these days, especially with lockdown about how to meet people. Yeah. What's your number one tip? And my number one tip for <laughs> stepping into online dating. Well, my number one tip. Okay, can I have two? Can I have two? Yeah, go on. Have two. <laughs> okay. Um, well, my first tip is okay, what I find with a lot of women is that they're carrying a lot of negative baggage when they go into internet dating. So whether that's heartbreak um over a past lover past boyfriend past marriage general disillusionment with men or whether it's kind of baggage about the internet and the dating process itself so it's like you know just this this attitude of like I hate the internet I find it overwhelming depleting and exhausting um or all men are rats all men are rats or or like all the men on the internet none of the men on the internet fancy me or they like, only want sex they only want sex or there's or I only attract the really ugly ones you know like I know that's a bit brutal but like women do say these things um so when you're going into it with that kind of mindset if we think about it like a a prism right that what you feed in is what you yeah. get out magnified so the, the law of attraction although that's a funny concept for people to get their heads around like it does actually work on the internet so the first thing is to clean up some of your own thinking I guess and some of your own emotional 
yeah heartbreak and disillusionment and we will be doing some of that on the, on the weekend that'll be the first yeah. thing that we look at it's important um, isn't it knowing that the 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 messages that kind of run the show that we're sometimes we're not even aware that we carry not yeah right yeah yeah so so I guess the first stage is to come into awareness of it and just be honest be honest about it with you know honest with compassion as well because if we're honest and then we get the stick out and beat ourselves up and like oh I'm so negative no wonder it's not working out for me well it doesn't you know you don't have to get the stick out right like we've all been there like yeah that's not so helpful either there. you've been there right like you yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> so like so I would you say I was going to ask if would you say that mindset um, and this kind of uh, the secret attitudes that we don't even know that we have are they the main block to women entering internet dating or is there other stuff? I think it's I think it's a large part of it but then I think the second part of it is like just really getting clear what you're looking for and what it is that you want so I, Mm. I see a lot of people who have what I would call like a divided will sometimes they want like two different things at the same time so they might want a serious relationship but they keep going for a hot younger men who are interested in sex (laughs) that's one thing that happens or another thing that happens is like not having the confidence to go for the men that they really like or another thing that might happen is just being a bit nebulous and a bit kind of like foggy about things like my dating experience changed when I decided that I didn't want to date anyone under 40 like that that was you know I actually wanted to meet someone who was in my own age bracket and it was a little bit of a hard call because when I chopped off those younger men (laughs) you know I have to say the pool did kind of wasn't quite so attractive anymore like visually speaking but it did mean that I wasn't wasting my time with younger guys that were after a cougar or, you know, whatever younger men call older women these days. And, and you know, we're, we're looking for, for sex, you know. And, I, and yes, I could have played that game and I have played that game and I was seduced by that game for quite a while. So it's quite flattering to be chatted up by those kinds of guys. But actually, if you want to, you know, it's like really honing in on okay what it is what do I really really want and actually not what do I really want just from an ego place but what's actually going to be really good for me like what's nourishing and nourishing yeah Yeah. what's going to be good for my heart like what Mm. really fits where I am in my life right now so um yeah and from there you know you just like I say that 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 under 40 example was a really good one because you know it it was a little bit of a shock to the system but also it, it just cleared the field of anybody that wasn't a serious contender and it meant that I just got to focus you know I just really focused in on looking for the right guy <laughs> it, do you know what it sounds like it sounds like taking responsibility actually oh, okay going, you know mm. really going actually I need to take responsibility for the kind of men I talk to and yeah. so just setting boundaries and being really yeah. true and authentic to yourself and what yeah. you need and you know is good for you yeah and you know I've used this example about younger men looking for sex partly because there's this conversation has happened in the group and partly because that was a thing for me but you know it could be anything it could be kind of men who message you in like a sloppy fashion or men who you know don't turn up on dates but then get back in touch six months later you know it's like you have to decide for yourself like or men that you know maybe you're you're messaging men who just can't really hold a conversation but actually you're Mm. someone to seduce you know to verbally and emotionally and intellectually seduce you you know like yeah right but uh, so many people I find are playing to lowest common denominator on the internet so they'll go for yeah things that just aren't suitable for them because they believe that that's what the internet's like or what we can you know we can learn to notice these red flags Yeah. yeah for sure yeah totally Right. Yeah. <laughs> so what was your worst experience dating online? <laughs> well, we were joking before this talk started that there were many. <laughs> yeah. like, lots and lots of different shades. Me um, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
it's hard because I'm tempted to cover all of them. I mean, I think the worst one, I think the worst one was being ghosted. No, not being ghosted, but just not getting a second date from a guy who, at the time, I thought I really liked him, right? He was he was good looking. Actually, he was from uh, Sri Lanka and I worked in Sri Lanka for some time. So we had that uh, connection. Um, I thought we'd had an interesting date and a good conversation. And then he just didn't call back for the second date and completely um, disappeared. And the story that I tell about that is it was just before Christmas. And I literally cried and cried and cried all the way through the Christmas holidays. Mm. Is I was just so upset about it. But when I look back on it, it actually wasn't just about him. It was about all the men that had let me down and all the disappointments that it was almost like I was kind of like carrying around. This is how I describe it in some of my literature. I was carrying around a wound that just went from one man to the next man to the next man and was like snowballing and snowballing. And then when this, this happened, you know, I was kind of up to here with the whole thing. Um, so I want to tell a positive story about the, I want to tell the end of that story in a minute, but this is what I mean about, you know, if you're carrying that, that baggage with you and not kind of really getting underneath it, like things can really start to mess you, mess you up. And it actually, knocks like, your self-worth. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it totally knocks your self-worth. And I think, you know, when we're not taking responsibility for ourselves, it's very easy to make other people's rejection personal. Yeah. Right? If we can't see where we've got agency and what we're doing, then everything becomes personal does that make sense mm, yeah absolutely. yeah absolutely so when I look back on that date I actually realized <laughs> that I did something really bad well not really bad but I basically just offloaded like a lot of painful stuff onto this guy during the day so we we're having quite an interesting conversation and then I just literally railroaded him with a lot of my unhappiness <laughs> which I now you know um wouldn't do uh yeah it's quite embarrassing actually to think that I did that um but I guess the I guess the positive story about that was was that it was such a an idea that whole episode that it was after that that I kind of really knew that something was wrong it wasn't about me it wasn't it was so it wasn't about the internet it wasn't about the men and it, it wasn't particularly about me you know as an I'm unattractive or I'm not good enough. It was something of like, oh, I have a kind of problem here that I need help with and that I need support with. And when I started getting that help and that support and I started really looking at my own part in things, then it was the beginning of a journey that meant eventually I became a dating and relationship coach because <laughs> right? I figured out so much stuff on the way that I was able to now help other women with it so it's that kind of thing about like identifying not kind of like beating yourself up with a stick and going into self-blame but just being able to go oh I think there might be an issue here and to be able to see that that issue isn't you know you're not a bad person there's nothing wrong with you you're not broken but you might want a little bit of help and support to yeah things around differently yeah thanks Emma that sounded like a tough experience, but a nice bit, golden nugget of learning. Yeah, it was yeah, definitely yeah. an idea, but it, it, you know, actually that was when I was 41, I think. And I'm 48 now. And I would say that the last seven years have been the most transformational of my adult mm. life. So, you know, these low spots don't have to stay <laughs> that way, right? We can all kick them into the dust with um I I remember when I was going through phases of dating or internet mm. dating I remember reading some advice saying um internet dating it's just a numbers game date as many uh, people as possible I was exhausted no. like so what do you do about that what do you do about the exhaustion and the burnout <laughs> that's really interesting because in my other group my free group I literally did a live the other week saying why dating is not a numbers game yeah <laughs> So it's it's an energy game, right? It's not a numbers mm. game. It's a, it's, a, it's an energy game. So. I don't have enough energy 
to play the numbers game. Oh. You know, my time is precious. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. So it comes back to this thing, doesn't it, about like getting in touch with your intuition and yeah. um, your own personal wisdom and having, you know, because I've been talking about getting clear up here, but it's really having this and this, having these two things in communication um, with one another. So I think a turning point for me because I'd met this guy, this, and this is a terrible story. I met a guy, he actually, he actually died about after I met him for three days. He had mm. sleep apnea and died in his sleep. He was a very beautiful man, actually. So anyway, that was a, another terrible story, but it wasn't particularly connected with internet dating. But I remember him saying to me, and this must have been around 2007 or something like that, when I met him, he said, I've... He said, I've n I know exactly what women are like before I meet them. He said, I can tell exactly what they're like. And I was really intrigued by that idea that you could actually tell what someone was going to be like um, before meeting them. And so shortly after that, or it might have, I can't remember how long after that, but I just I went on a date with a guy and I thought, right, I'm, I'm going to test my intuition. I'm going to see if I can tell exactly what he's like before I meet him so before I went out on the date with him I wrote a list of qualities um, and, and my prediction for what I thought he would be like and when I got there I realized that I was I was about 80 or 90 percent accurate actually mm. yeah and and what and writing it down really helped clarify it because I, I remember what I wrote down was oh he's going to be intelligent but arrogant right and 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 perhaps not the best listener and that was exactly what he was like. He was very erudite, you know, conversational, da, 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 I enjoyed talking, but there, was, there wasn't really any space for me. So that little moment of going, oh, actually maybe I can tell what people are like. And then I just kind of worked and worked that muscle to the point where I got it down to a, a fine art, right? The more I was able to just pay attention to my intuition and the more I was able to trust it, and the more I was able to just make little notes and kind of clarify things, um, what that meant was, was that I was going for fewer dates, but my dates were improving in quality all the time. Mm -hmm. And you can't predict everything about a person. Like I couldn't predict this guy's politics, for example. Um, I also didn't predict that he was on cocaine for the whole date. <laughs> right. But, but, you know, I, I was with, I was within a ballpark of a certain kind of personality. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, once you get clear on what you want and you're able to hone your intuition and start feeling through that technological interface, then yeah, it becomes about quality more than quantity. And I think once you're getting, you know, even one quality day every month, you know, you're gonna you're gonna meet your partner sooner than you are going yeah. really fast at it, you know, spraying yeah. your attention and your energy all over the place and then getting burnt out and getting back into that negative, yeah, negative cycle. So yeah, that was the turnaround. So our weekend, you've called it the art of embodied dating. Mm. Mm, sounds like you're starting to nail it a bit then. And you're just <laughs> speaking about like, yeah, the, the, intuition. the intuition. Yeah. What are you hoping to achieve with this weekend? Oh, lots of lovely, beautiful things. I'm hoping to set set the women up who come on, in a, on a really grounded um, path when it comes to internet dating so we'll look at some of the things that I've been talking about I know you're going to go on to talk about some other things as well but we'll look at yeah dropping off some of this baggage from past experiences we're going to look at kind of like getting clear about what it is that you want we're going to look at turning on your profile so that it's a really good advertisement for who you are as a person and we'll take a little look at text message conversations as well and how to have those feel vibrant and alive. And I mean, there's a whole, I mean, you and I've talked about this. We maybe won't go into this too much now, but I mean, there's, there's potentially some follow on workshops, right? As well. We'll oh, yeah. This is a big <laughs> chunk of work. <laughs> this is a big chunk of work so where we can go into some of these things in a lot more detail. But definitely from that first weekend, just a really good 
foundation, right? My energetic field is clear. I'm clear what I want. I know what my playing field is, you know, and I'm, I'm, and I'm, that's what I'm going to add. I'm going to stay aligned with that. And I'm going to advertise that boldly, loudly, confidently. <laughs> Right. And, also and then, group work's really powerful. Yeah, I forgot as to well. say group work. Yeah. Group work's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. It's just, it's just a whole different vibe to the one to one. Kind of intensifies it and rockets it even more. Yeah, and you kind of absolutely. get to learn from loads of different women's experiences as well. And, yeah. and then absolutely. you kind of grow a little bit of a support network for going forward yeah. as well. Yeah, totally. So I think. For me, in terms of my transformation, there was always three elements. There was the one-to-one -one mentoring and coaching. There was um, practices, you know, uh, like physical embodied practice. And then there was community, like having a community yeah. of support. So I think, you know, I mean, this group that we're talking in now is, is coming to an end, but because lockdown is lifting, my desire is to meet people in person. I think you said to me once, like, touch them, smell them, you know, <laughs> like, kind of, like, like get embodied with one another and meet one another yeah. in person. Yeah, hang out and, and, and really give people the opportunity, yeah, like you say, to learn from one another, inspire one another and support one another. So yeah, should be good. Beautiful. And come in the hot tub. Oh, you haven't yeah. mentioned the hot tub, Emma. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So we'll have a lovely big workshop space with great views out over London. Have a lovely big kind of like table that we can all sit around and talk. And then there'll be some time to get in the hot tub and whew, let everything. With the dating and relationship coach and a sex coach. And a sex coach. Yeah. I mean, this sounds like a dream weekend in a hot tub. It is a dream weekend. It's amazing. <laughs> It's going to be amazing. So I think let's should we turn should we turn to you? Should we? Yeah. Yeah. Let me just check sure. and see. Everyone's quite quiet at the moment, but guys, if you have any questions, we do have time at the end. So um, do feel free to ask. So Miss Gem as or Miss Gem as, I don't know which you prefer. Um, how did you get into the work that you do? Because it's a very Ooh, special and specific thing. In my early 20s, I think I completely sexually disconnected and I don't even think I really knew mm -hmm. because I'd never really had fully embodied or good quality sex. Right. I'd learned how to orgasm um, mm -hmm. quite, and it was quite efficient. <laughs> you know, I could make it happen quite quickly. Right. It wasn't necessarily very nourishing. It wasn't necessarily, you know, I just knew there could be more. Yeah. And it all got to the point where my body just kind of got a bit bored with the sex I was putting myself through a little bit. Right, right. And I think I just kept changing partners, hoping that they it was their fault somehow. Yeah. I would one day meet Prince Charming and he would then teach me how to be multi-orgasmic, you know. Whereas actually what I've learned since is it is about me. Is about me and my body, and I have to learn about my body and what it wants, what it needs in any given moment. Mm -hmm. And that every day is going to be different, every moment is going to be different. Mm -hmm. And just recognizing the kind of pressure that we put on our bodies to perform, mm -hmm. whether that's um, orgasms for ourselves, and if they don't work, we get a harder, faster, battery operated toy, you know, oh. kind of push the intensity a bit. Or, or performance in the sense of, you know, having to orgasm to satisfy a partner. All of these things just kind of shock our body into yeah. places it doesn't naturally want to go. Right. And so I, when I started this work for myself, I didn't even know what I was going to achieve mm -hmm. because I'd never really experienced mm -hmm. the kind of sex and pleasure that I'm having now. Mm -hmm. And so I stepped into it just thinking, I need to do something because it wasn't just my sex life that was suffering and my relationships that were suffering. I had complete uh, relationship breakdowns, you know. Right, okay. But also on a wider level, you know, my self-esteem was really mm -hmm. through the floor mm -hmm. and I wasn't getting good jobs and I wasn't making enough money uh, and yeah. I wasn't taking big enough risks to make success out of anything really. Mm -hmm. So I just wasn't allowing um, pleasure in my life on all aspects. Mm -hmm. And when I started doing the work 
on learning more about my sexuality and my body and my pleasure and mm. releasing any shame or confusion that we mm-hmm. had, that I had about my whether that was self pleasure or partner sex partner pleasure when I kind of released any confusion and really got to start to learn about myself things really changed you know I was attracting better quality people and you know Mm. men who were more definitely more suitable for me Mm. and I just started taking myself a little bit more seriously and valuing what I had to offer in the world more seriously so I became self-employed and I started my own business and I became really very successful doing what I was doing and you know really had to just step into being uh, my fullest self if Mm. you like and it just feels a disservice if I'm not teaching other people how to do this. Right. I believe in sexual energy. To yeah. An aspect uh, can change all aspects. Our health, yeah. uh, you know, our well-being, our financial situation, not only our relationships and our sex, but our relationships to other other people, our children. You know, yeah. we become better people actually yeah. if we have more information about our bodies and how we can be in pleasure on a regular basis <laughs> this is why I'm so excited to be working with you on this project because because the most transformational period of my life was connected to orgasmic meditation which yeah. was the, you know sexual energy embodiment uh, practice and obviously as a coach mostly working online you know there's a limit to to that kind of work you know um, mm. Yeah, in terms of like teaching women about their sexual energy. So, and yeah, it's just such a source of power, isn't it? To, um... Oh yeah, absolutely. And when we allow ourselves and give ourselves permission to tap into that power, we just walk a bit differently in the world. <laughs> you know? And people and respond we, to us differently, I think. As and well. we don't stand for bullshit anymore, actually. Yeah. You know? we take and a we little bit of... Yeah, and not necessarily in a harsh way, just mm-hmm. in a really, no, that's not for me. I know my limits, I know my boundaries, and I feel really empowered from that place. Yeah, but yeah. we just don't tend to attract it anymore. Really. Yeah. If I think back to the situations I used to attract in men and in dating and in sex and relationships, and I hear women often in my coaching say, you know, there aren't any good men left. All the good mm-hmm. ones are married or taken. I only attract rubbish men. All rubbish, all men are rubbish or rats. And I hear all of that. And I tune, and I know that that was my truth mm-hmm. in my 20s. And I tune into it now and I'm like, it's not what I see at all yeah. in my personal experience anymore. And I also hear that other women are having very different experiences. But for me, I'm like, okay, what is the difference there? just like wow I really am attracting better quality people these days not just men women as well you know, yeah. great people. <laughs> so good so one of I the feel things- a bit untouchable like men oh. who men who only want women for sex they're not going to come anywhere near me because just what I give off maybe yeah. they know they don't have a chance <laughs> right and I'm not losing out if they don't come near me <laughs> Well, I wanted to ask you about this because the last time I was on the internet, it was literally like the Wild West in terms of like the way that people were behaving sexually around one another. Mm. Um, I mean, the last time I was on the internet without, you know, the final time when I was with the scalpel, it was different. But, um, and, you know, there's so much going on there in terms of like men, you know, sexting, sending pictures, kind of you know inviting them straight over to women's houses without inviting them out on a date there's like a that hookup culture is is massive and it feels magnified on the internet which is why you know you can feel why women are kind of like ah yeah. but like what would you say is the best way for women to deal with that or position that like how how are women supposed to position themselves around that when Good it's question. so prevalent on the internet Hookup culture is very prevalent and may, and you know, obviously it works for some people. Oh, no yeah. I'm not, no, no, no. If, absolutely. if what we're wanting is that's greater want. intimacy yeah. and to yeah. build a deep, nourishing relationship with one other person, then I would say set your boundaries for yourself before you even step into mm-hmm. the app or online dating. Because it's very difficult when you're in it to then figure out 
oh is this okay for me mm-hmm. whereas if you get really clear at the start what do I want what do I want to what do I want to achieve what does my mm-hmm. ideal relationship kind of look like and we could be mm-hmm. a bit flexible about that but get an idea of that and go okay what's the step in that direction what boundaries do I want to put in place mm-hmm. how long am I going to message this person when would I want to meet up with them mm-hmm. where would our first date be would it be a lunch or would it be an evening these mm-hmm. have different energies around them you know and actually when you know am I ready for sex straight away or is it going to be a few weeks or is it going to be a few months or is it going to be on date three mm-hmm. just so that we're really clear and again with you know what kind of language will I tolerate and you know do I want to share sexy pics do I want to see you know mm-hmm. cock shots and stuff just get really clear on yourself so that you've already kind of got it outlined a little bit in your mind mm-hmm. so that as it's happening you could go oh I've already thought of this and this is probably a no for me yeah and it's a bit like sex I get people to set boundaries before they have sex with someone because the idea is is that if we've got it in our mind before we step into the arena before yeah. all the brain chemicals get involved or the, turn on yeah. or the attraction where maybe we're not necessarily making very good choices yeah. when the brain chemistry starts get whirring a little bit. Yeah. But if we set those rules before we get into sex, then we already have something that we've decided and that we refer back to, and we know the parameters of which we can play within. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then also we set those boundaries with the people that we're talking to as well. It's like, actually, that's not okay with me. Can mm. we try that again a different way? Yeah. <laughs> I love that invitation because sometimes women are, I think women are scared to, to to say that's not okay with um them because they're worried then that they'll lose this man this man who otherwise they were attracted to etc cetera, etc cetera. so for some for some women it feels like a choice between speaking up and losing the guy or staying quiet and going along with something that they're not really that into so to be yeah. able to kind of make that invitation of like oh can we you know can we try that again can we do that in a different way that's yeah and and they can run with that or they can run away either of those is fine but sometimes if we don't tell people what we need and what our expectations are they don't know Mm -hmm. you know and especially if that is just the thing that's happening out there online and people have got a bit lazy you know like no I'm gonna call you to step up Mm -hmm. and then they have a choice yeah (laughs) brilliant and I don't know, I don't know if I wrote this question down, but I think I was going to ask you, like, what what has your experience been of um, internet dating? Have you, gosh, delved into my, it very much? I or? think when my last experience with internet dating was probably two years ago, right? And it was small. I think I was on, I think I was on one app for about three days, and mm. that was enough. I was <laughs> like, I don't think this is my world. I was right. overwhelmed. I was burnt out. Mm. I kind of got a hit of excitement about, oh, a few messages, a few messages. And then found myself just messaging people because mm-hmm. I was a bit polite or I was a bit bored or they were, and I was like, this isn't what I want because mm. I hadn't set the parameters. Yeah. I'm not even sure I really wanted a relationship at that point, but it was just the thing that people do when you're single and I yeah. probably should get a relationship. And I caught myself very quickly and I was like, oh, this is not for me. And so I recognize how easy it is to go into that because there's an expectation is what you do, what you do when you're single, single woman in your 30s or 40s, what you do, isn't it? Yeah. And so for me, it was recognizing my own patterns of behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it really did bring it out for me. I don't have to be polite to these people. I don't have to engage. I don't have to stop Mm -hmm. what I'm doing and make space to reply to messages straight away. You know? (laughs) I don't have to prioritize people I don't know or people who are just messaging late at night and aren't going to meet up with me yeah so I was just overwhelmed and yeah it was quite confusing and I mean this wasn't long ago this was only a couple of years ago Mm -hmm. and it shocked me the level at which I was engaging and was like wow this isn't how you would be in real life yeah it's always a good comparison to make right yeah and I like to think that I you know I'm I feel like I'm an empowered woman who knows my mind and knows my body and knows my boundaries but it still got me somehow so I recognize that you know internet dating has got a definite yeah expectation and messages around it that we all kind of hook into a little bit we don't need to beat ourselves up for doing that just recognizing that oh okay 
before I enter the arena, how do I warm up for it a bit? <laughs> <laughs> well, the phone companies are definitely um, designing things as well, right? So that we get addicted. So there's all of that kind Absolutely. of like, well, like the notifications, the electronics, like da 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 da. But it feels like what you're saying is it can be a really good tool for self growth as well, you know? Yeah. Like, like just to measure yourself against that thing and to be able to, you know, look at yourself at, at more of yeah. a distance relation. Shoot. what are my habits where am I numbing out because I just keep swiping oh, yeah. I'm not really looking at anyone anymore I'm just like yeah. no, 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 swiping no. judging yeah all of those things swiping judging feeling insecure yeah all of those things so it feels like there's a theme coming out around kind of like um eros sexual power embodiment taking responsibility yeah. knowing your own boundaries defining your playing field like all of that is stuff that we're gonna uh, look at on the workshop so let me ask you, um, what are you excited about in terms of the workshop, the art embodied? What I'm excited about is seeing transformation. Mm -hmm. you know, it's only two days, two nights. It's, you know, it's a really short period of time, but so much work can get done in that time. Yeah. You know, we, myself and you, Emma, we're just a powerhouse of information. So it's just going to be a short, sharp, intensive, and the women all learning from each other and at the end, just feeling like they've been through a week longs learning in yeah. just two days. Just a short space of time. So, and I want to say as well that the last time we came on one of your workshops, Nick and I, that Nick and our relationship was riding high for like a whole, maybe month or six weeks afterwards. It was just like, yeah. woo, we're up here in the stratosphere. So, you know, the work does, I mean, my opinion is come on as many weekend workshops as you can yeah. <laughs> in the course of a year or in the course of your life. Um, but definitely it gets in the body and it stays the in the physical memory. It stays yeah. in the nervous system. And it means yeah. that in future, we respond to things in a different way because our body knows how to respond yeah. to things. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of our minds questioning, how do I respond to this situation? Yeah. Whether that's like you know in person dating online messaging uh but our body knows so we don't have to doubt ourselves so much yeah so we i can give it really positive experiences to cling on to sorry say that again we give it really we, positive we can give our body really positive experiences to cling on to yeah. and house in its memory yeah to take forward into yeah. our online dating game so to speak yeah, because a lot of this stuff all comes down to the nervous system, doesn't it? So, yeah. you know, when we're looping around, like I was just explaining to somebody earlier on, like our neural pathways, when we're looping around certain negative thoughts, like our neural pathways are connected to our nervous system. So if we mm. change our nervous system and hack into our nervous system, we can actually hack into our, our thinking and our, you know, and then our thinking creates our habits, our habits create patterns. So, yeah. you know, if we can hack into it in the body, a lot of other stuff changes. And with the kind of swipe, swipe, swipe kind of online into app dating, that really is the fight or flight. No, 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 no. Right, gonna, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost working ourselves up into quite an anxious, heady state. Yeah, it's true. And so many people judging so many other people. It's mm. like, yeah. We're not surprised. Like, listen, like, yeah, if anybody, I don't, who's watching this? We've got a few people on, but they're all very quiet. So look, ladies, now is your chance for questions. Um, I have one more question for Jem. Um, and I was going to say something else, which I've completely forgotten, but we'll come back to the workshop at the end. I just wanted to make that plea for, um, plea for questions, not plea, request for questions. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> get us while we're here. This is yeah. good information. <laughs> it is um let me ask you this question how do you think our work complements one another I've kind of mentioned it from my perspective uh well how is it not gonna complement it you know how can we <laughs> dating awesome. isn't a head experience mm -hmm. it's not a, you know ticks all the box looks good on paper mm -hmm. it's all about you know chemistry and attraction but also recognizing our own habits in that as well mm -hmm. So, you know, does this person feel good for me? Or actually, is it from a, an anxious lack place? And what are our behaviours that we act out in that mm -hmm. place when we find something that we want to cling on to? You know? mm -hmm. And what kind of different habits can we then put in place and practices? Really practical tools. I like practical tools. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
yeah it's a place when we're connecting with another person yeah you know, i'm all about these are the steps boom 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 these are the practices that you can use when you don't get the phone call that you want or when you really want to meet with them again tomorrow but actually you could probably hang off a few days might be a bit healthier you know? yeah there were so many practical things um so yeah. i just think yeah it's beautiful it's a beautiful bringing together <laughs> it sounds like we're going to do like a lot of like visioning stuff and clearing stuff out and then getting a lot of like practical things in place that people can come back to and use as resources i mean that was the other thing the last time we came on your workshop actually is that you set us up with exercises that yeah. we have gone back to you know every time we're disconnected we're like oh should we do that thing that Jem taught us and then we get back into connection and then that kind of sets our relationship off on a different tack again and i know that you work with solo people as well as with couples so you know it might be yeah if you get disconnected from yourself the next time you're back online and you've been to the workshop that you're going to go oh there was that practice that gem um, yeah me. let me just kind of like spend a few minutes doing this and then i'll go back to talking to the person that i was in conversation with that's brilliant i try and make my work as accessible and as simple yeah. and as kind of easy to take home as possible you know it's not just come on this weekend and it will work its magic on you it will but then also <laughs> yeah do your little bits of homework in between and yeah. see how that can grow in you beautiful we do have a question i think let me have a look or it might just be a comment but oh this is an awesome combination I'm already working with Emma, so looking forward to working to, sorry, I've got volume up on here. Looking forward to November to work with Gem 2. Lovely smile. I will be 60 then, and it's good to know that there is still time to transform. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, 60 is the new 40 anyway. Sexy um, at 60. <laughs> she's totally sexy already, but yeah, she can get even sexier after this weekend. So I think, um, yeah, great. So let's talk about this then. Um, if you're already a client of mine uh this workshop is still like brilliant for you to do like it would be a total kind of like you know high energy boost fast track um to your development um and and totally complementary to the underlying work that we're doing on an ongoing basis if you're not yet a client of mine um we'll talk about Gem in a minute uh, this is a great way in, right? It's like about a tenth of the of the price. So um, this is a really, really great way to like dip your toe in the water, get some understanding and, and get some kind of concrete solid results, but without having to commit to a longer uh, piece of work. So for those of you who are in the group, but not yet clients of mine, this is the time. This is the time to, to get more deeply involved. Um, and Jen, we're going to forward this video to some of your clients as well what would you like to say or not clients but people who've been on previous workshops people who yeah well I've got one-to-one -one clients in my group I've got my retreat clients in my group I've got couples I've got singles I've got all sorts mm -hmm. and the people who've worked with me often know that the work really works yeah. and it will just all just build and really support whatever process you're currently in mm -hmm. so for example I've got my empowered women's book club and we talk a lot about sexuality and mm -hmm. about how we can then, you know, really live our sexual lives. And again, there's a lot of conversations there that come up around, you know, men, type of men that we attract. And mm -hmm. then here you've got the wisdom of Emma to, you know, bring in the kind of the dating techniques and to really get mainstream, mainstream, streamlined, sorry. Streamlined. Well, it's both. It is quite mainstream, but it's also it's yeah. aligned in the mainstream, streamlined in the mainstream. Aligned. How we can yeah. get aligned with what we want and what we're putting out there and then see mm. the results in what we're getting back. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, the first time I'm running an event which involves dating. And mm. especially during now that lockdown has lifted, so many people are saying, right. hey, how do we meet people? How do we meet people? Mm -hmm. This is how we meet people. Yeah. And especially if we've done some work in sexuality. Yeah go online and they don't necessarily want to write I'm looking for a, a tantric love god because that brings all kinds of messages mm -hmm. but how can we put across exactly what we do need what we you know, want. without attracting the wrong attention yeah and maybe I'm just going to say something about that whole thing about mainstream actually because in in some ways like I do feel a bit more mainstream than than you um but also like you know, my belief is and my experience is, is that actually the internet encompasses 
a wild variety of mm. people and that most adults at some point in their life now have tried internet dating yeah. and actually like one of my other principles that we haven't really talked about today um but one of my most successful clients loves to quote this but it's to shine your light so brightly on the internet that someone else shining their light brightly can find you oh, so okay. it's really nice isn't it um and so you know whether you're an alternative person whether you're lefty whether you're vaccinated unvaccinated like whoever you are right whatever your bag is there is actually somebody out there for you on the internet it's just that you want to be in that place where you're you're clearly vibrating the thing you know the highest not the high, I don't really like high and low but like the um what the, the word fullest be? version of fullest. yourself fullest version yeah the fullest version of yourself and then you know again like what I the way that I wrote my profile in the end was just so kind of detailed and full of life and honest about who I was that there was just so much in there for people to be able to hook into if if they vibed with me or if they didn't yeah you know move on their way so um, yeah I just wanted to qualify that because I I know that your work perhaps sits a little bit kind of outside of the mainstream but I don't want people yeah. to feel on this workshop that we're encouraging either mainstream or non-mainstream <laughs> there's no one size fits all there's for no dating right? all. so yeah. let's try and make it fit for us whoever for us. we are and whatever yeah. we're looking for exactly Dr Zeus quote something along the lines of uh, you know finding someone else that's as strange as you to be strange yeah. with oh, that yeah. isn't the correct yeah. quote but you it's, know kind of like that yeah so I think we probably should say that at this stage it's a women only workshop it's women, um, only. It's women only if uh, Jim has any men watching uh, but you know if you're a man and you're watching and you're interested you know we can always look at opening this up on another occasion and I know that men struggle with internet dating just as much as as women do so just message Jim if you're a man and you're um, watching this because uh, you know ask for what you want and you might get it um and what's left to say so yeah here's the deal so it's the 12th to the 14th of november we're going to start on the friday evening which is the 12th run through until early evening on the on the sunday or late afternoon early evening on the sunday um we will go on into the evening kind of mid-evening-ish on the Saturday I think we said so you know clear your weekend if you want to do uh, the workshop The we've got two prices there's an early bird price and a main price so the early bird price is 279 for the whole weekend and the full price is 329 if you book by October the 16th um, on, and you can pay in installments but you'll need to pay up by October the 16th to get the early bird price um, and we haven't decided who's going to take the money <laughs> but just contact one of us <laughs> just kind of we'll discuss that contact one of us <laughs> and you had to pay <laughs> um, one but, thing we should say is there's uh, there isn't accommodation so you do have to find your own sofa to kick on and it's near Broccoli London way yeah um, so it's South East London zone two 10 minute train from London Bridge um, yeah Broccoli is there's three stations nearby we'll send you all of those details but what I will say is there is a premiere in just down the road within one walking distance and there's also a variety of airbnb accommodation nearby and bring well. your cozy for the hot tub bring your cozy for the hot tub and we're also not doing food so it will be refreshing you know bring it we'll do some very light refreshments to make sure that people don't dehydrate and i prefer food. bringing my own food you know i'm just i'm a bit of a food snob emma you know i don't yeah. want to <laughs> yeah no totally whenever it's bring shared food people turn up with bad quality sausage rolls or dry quiche and I'm like oh <laughs> so yeah you could pack your own organic avocado yeah one. look there's plenty you of don't have to share <laughs> there's, there's plenty of options nearby but when we send out emails booking up information then we'll go into more detail about that but I think it's um yeah but the I reckon art of embodied dating art of embodied dating you're going to get loads and loads out of it yeah in fact, I'm actually quite blown away by how much they're going to get out of it. I know. I, I, I'm not sure we're going to fit it all in. Now. Well, we are. We are. But <laughs> yeah. this feels like it, we could do a week on this, Emma. The amount of information and the amount of practices that we've got between us. 
well, maybe this is weekend one. Well, exactly. We did discuss this in, uh, vaguely that we might have weekend two and three, but definitely num weekend number one is going to be brilliant. They're going to get loads out of it. Yeah, I'm excited. I know you've run similar in the past. So talking you through your previous workshop, it feels really, yeah, uh, just substantial, like yeah. really substantial information that people can take away and make changes straight away. Yeah. I'm going to say one final thing that is we're limiting the number of places to a maximum of 12 and now mm. Jen has a big audience and I have yeah. a big audience as well so if you want one of those places like literally like you know think about it so I've got six places Jem's got six places so get in touch ASAP to make and sure it's the first time we're doing it so it's going to be popular right yeah, yeah, yeah. And people can pay by installments as well. You can pay a deposit and then just pay bits and bobs as you go along. Yeah. So a hundred pounds deposit and then is that right? Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. I think that's it. Are we good? <laughs> All right. Okay. Let me just double check for any more comments. But Lovely no. getting to know more of your dating background, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> some stuff I didn't know about you I always enjoy bad date conversations <laughs> well thankfully I did turn it around in the end but yeah <laughs> it's not uncommon all right love I will let you go because you've got another workshop to run this evening I but have very wow. soon. thanks so much lovely to there. lovely to see you Emma and I look forward to meeting more of your tribe and their Brilliant. combined tribes at yeah. the Art of Embodied Dating weekend right. all right see you later see you soon. Thank bye you. bye